Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Sean, and today we're going to be doing cricket bombs. We got a whole bunch of folks requesting cricket bombs, which is kind of funny that uh, Jake and I have made all kinds of explosives, hand grenades, mortars, claymores, all kinds of things, but we never made uh, cricket bombs until someone requested it, and we also may have made napalm as children and whatnot, as is on our awesome shirt right here, which by the way, we'll have a link for those to, if you want to get one of those. But um, we never made cricket bombs as, as children that are uh, destructive devices under the NFA. So we're going to be making them here. And what we'll do is we we'll blow them up in, a, in some pumpkins to test out the difference between a flash powder one and a black powder one to see what the uh, different effects of them are. But for that, we want to make sure we thank our sponsor, Global Ordnance. They have all kinds of good stuff on there and they actually do legitimate international arms dealing. There'll be a link in the comment section under from Buddy the Cat. So if you want to link, click on that, you'll be able to purchase stuff from them that will be able to support us doing more cool stuff with ordnance lab so like I said we'll get these pumpkins blown up and we'll do some other stuff with some of these cricket bombs just kind of show y'all what happens with them we made several type of cricket bombs to test out for this video each one with a different explosive filler of varying detonation velocities black powder flash powder and a hybrid smokeless black powder the first is the black powder cricket bomb we purchased even more pumpkins to test out the explosive strength of each cricket bomb we jammed the pumpkin onto a metal post then place the cricket bomb inside the pumpkin. All right, so that right there was a black powder one. You can see uh, from the piece, it was only about, what, 10 meters away from the pumpkin. So it didn't really, and it blew up, but it didn't disperse into a bunch of fragments while the uh, pumpkin definitely distributed stuff way out. Brian found a chunk about 25 30 meters away from here so good stuff let's try it now with the flash powder cap all right so that flash powder was a much larger bang uh, there's hardly any pieces we can find of the uh, uh, co2 container so that right there you can see the difference between the black powder and the flash powder, just the amount of fragmentation produced and nothing left of the pumpkin. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put up some butcher paper and we're gonna see what the difference or how the fragmentation pattern is gonna look like whenever we set one off and see where all it's throwing pieces. To get a better visual of the fragmentation, we put up four T-posts around the blast center. Then we put up butcher paper at three sides around the blast center. It's not perfect, but it's a simple method to show fragmentation patterns. All right, so here I am rocking our super lightweight armor mobility plates. Thanks again to them for sending it to us. What we have right here is one of our flash powder filled uh, cricket bombs. Now we put some butcher paper around three sides of it. We're gonna try to catch the fragmentation to see what the pattern is. There's always gonna be that dude in the comment section be like, oh my God, that ain't scientific. The whole thing here is that, well, we don't really have the budget to be scientific and all that good stuff. So we're just going to do, to, this is going to be a simulacrum, uh, as Jake loves to say, of just to catch a little bit of the fragmentation and see what it looks like. So let's slide it off. The flash powder charge sent frag into all three sides of the butcher paper. Here it is to the left side, the rear side, and the right side. All right, that made a nice little bang. When we were over the berm, we could hear the pew of the fragmentation going everywhere. We've got it where it knocked over the pole right here um, and split open the, uh, the pipe. And we've got fragmentation um, here behind us and also to our left here. Um, Brian was uh, over in this direction about 50, 75 meters away and he actually heard fragmentation flying over his head. So it was really powerful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it again with a black powder filled one. We'll patch up the holes and set it off and see what happens. All right, so that right there was the black powder and looks like nothing produced fragmentation. Of course, this wasn't scientific. It's not like we had the whole thing covered and would have gotten it. What may have happened is just like we did before with the, um, the pumpkin where it detonated, but it didn't cause any fragmentation whenever it went off. So what we'll do is we're gonna try one more with a uh, combination of smokeless powder and black powder in there just to see what happens with that one. The 
hybrid cricket bomb sent fragmentation everywhere, here is the left side impact on the butcher paper. A large piece went through the rear side. Another large piece went through the right side. All right. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. Um, that right there actually seemed to be more powerful than the flash powder uh, cricket bombs. We're pretty impressed by it. You can see that there's fragmentation here behind us and to the side and a bunch of smaller fragments. So that right there um, was really neat to see the difference. That was Jake's idea. We weren't even sure it would actually go critical. So we've made amazing advancements in um, technology with uh, cricket bombs, which basically makes us like, you know, Nobel or something like that. So what we're gonna do, um, we don't have enough time to go figure out the best load for cricket bombs and whatnot, but we're gonna do a basically a PSA on why you shouldn't make cricket bombs. So we'll get going on that. All right, since we're always getting folks that are talking about customizing hands and other body appendages with explosives, we wanted to do a little PSA on what can go wrong with setting off um, cricket bombs whenever you don't throw them in time. So what we'll be, we got a hand here from one of our mannequins and we're gonna blow it up. We'll make a future video where we're actually gonna be simulating hands, making a simulacrum as Jake would say, for various things going off in your hand. But we're just gonna use this to give you a real quick thing about what you should probably not make them aside from the fact that um, they're a felony unless you register them with the ATF. So let's blow this thing up. All right, well, as y'all can see, things really got out of hand here. Um, we've got just little pieces of it um, blew totally off of the um, the rest of the arm, and that right there just really shows the devastation that can happen. So make sure that you always set off your cricket bombs at arm's length. Um, so anyways, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Again, making uh, cricket bombs is making destructive devices that the ATF frowns upon unless you fill out the proper paperwork. So definitely don't do this at home. We really want to send a shout out to our sponsors, Global Ordinance, to thank them for supporting us on this. There's going to be a link from Buddy the Cat making a comment where you can uh, click on there and you purchase the stuff from them, they'll support us. Please remember our stuff for uh, Patreon, Venmo, Bitcoin, Litecoin, all kinds of different stuff. So thanks again for your time and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.